It was good to go. Have a great meeting. Can you have a Good morning uh, and welcome to our general finance meeting uh, of August 21st. I'll first begin by identifying any media on the line. Seeing or hearing no media on the line, that'll lead us into our next item, which is any changes or additions or deletions to the agenda. Helen? I want an update on the audit. Okay, we'll add that. Is there anything further? Yeah, we'll just uh, we'll provide just a brief update of our last couple days in London at the uh, AMO conference. Um, just for any uh, any counselor who attended, if they would like uh, to um, speak on that. But again, we'll have a further follow up on the specifics um, once we finish our reporting. That being said, I'll look to a mover and oh, sorry, Tammy. Can we move three B in in camera at this Great. time? Great. So 3B is actually being shifted to in camera. Anything further? Okay, seeing or hearing none, I'll need a motion to adopt our general finance agenda with those uh, two uh, additions moved by Audrey. Is there a seconder? I'll second it, Melba. Seconded by Melba. All in favor? Any opposed? <laughs> I See, have a comment. Oh, sorry, Helen. So motion's we're, carried. We're putting three B in camera, but it's already in the open agenda item, so people have already read it. That doesn't mean they've read the details. I there's know, confidential but says, information. It says, why we made the it. it says business loan interest, so people are going to wonder what's going on with the money because we're taking it from open to in camera. That's well, just my well, comment. We will further report on on that okay that being said uh, i'm going to move to our delegation portion this morning where we have a guest um, from the riverman lacrosse uh, association uh, looking for a sponsorship uh, attending president's cup uh, that being said it looks like we have uh, marco online uh, i'll pass good morning marco i'll pass the floor uh, over to yourself to give us a, a brief uh, overview um, and then we'll get into discussion. Okay. Good morning, over to you, Marco. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, Cheryl would have loved to have been here, but due to her recent family uh, uh, issues, so she'll just not be attending. Um, so this will be our third, technically our third uh, run to the President's Cup in a row. Um, I don't think, uh, I don't think anyone has really done that in as many years. So we're looking for uh, help and sponsorship to deal with uh, costs of uh, rental vehicles, uh, perhaps uh, an Airbnb or hotel for out of town players to stay in Oakville, uh, food uh, and general supplies during the tournament. Um, because as many of you are aware, uh, games themselves cost money to, to operate, uh, let alone a national championship where we're playing every day and sometimes twice a day. And I believe we're, we're a perfect representation of, of the community. Uh, everyone from in it and around it uh, all come together and, and we, we represent the nation as one. That's all I really have to say. Hey, thanks, uh, Nyala, for that. Uh, Mark, well, I'll open up the floor for further questions or comments. Uh, Helen? Yeah, I, I apologize because my, my, my uh, Dropbox isn't working. So do we have a budget of some sort? Has yep. a budget of some sort been given to us? Yes, it's within the packages. Maybe Marco, if you okay. can speak. Right. Yeah. Uh, sure, I'll just I'll just break down the the four lines. Um, player transportation, which would include uh, the rental vehicles, um, seventy six hundred. Uh, food, uh, it's an estimation. Meals per day, 
for the amount of players and staff, uh, 5,400 for the week. Uh, our trainer costs, um, 2,000. And miscellaneous um, tape, gas, uh, water, ice, laundry, uh, et cetera, uh, 3,000. So it comes to a total of 18,000 uh, being requested. Okay, thanks for that breakdown. Um, I know just one of the other pieces council always looks to is uh, fundraising efforts. Mm -hmm. um, so how and what does that look like on your behalf? Uh, fundraising efforts. We have in the past, we have done cookouts. Um, we tried to do that one this year, but weather permitting was, was not really that great. Um, but every few weeks or months, we host uh, a dance at the barn uh, to raise funds. Um, just to kind of get everybody together, get the spirit going. We'll probably have another one in October, um, just to kind of end out the year. It's usually one of our bigger ones. And we do um, sponsorship giveaways. Uh, this year, we actually got a nice sponsorship from Chili Moose. They donated an extra cooler. So we've been raffling off tickets. Um, we've also been selling merchandise to help raise money. Obviously, uh, uh, the gate, uh, brings us enough money to kind of operate our costs throughout the year, but then again, it, it you know to run a successful team is always costs uh, money. So, I mean, community support is always is always uh, helpful. Okay, now well, thank you uh, for that, Marco. I do have uh, Greg next. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Marco, for coming in. The um, yeah, and congratulations too on. Uh, on this, you know, making the championship. So that's, that's really nice to see. So I think third year in a row. So <clears throat> congratulations. Um, is that um, when you come to these um, and these final championships, is it, um, is there a burden on the, on the player also to, uh, to chip in on any of their own um, money to, to provide for this, uh, this championship? Is there, there always is, I mean, because it's so close, um, most players are going to travel probably by themselves. I don't know if we're going to allocate any, we, we probably should allocate some, some money to fuel, but that's why we have, we have team vans to help to support everybody. Um, the only burden I would say on, on a player aspect would be any meals that we don't cover or recovery items that they want, because it is a grueling tournament. It's, it's six games in five days to, to start us off and probably eight by the end of it. Um, yeah, anything they have for recovery uh, or, or whatever they want is going to be taken on them. But we, we try to provide the, the necessities to for the tournament. Right. Thank you. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> thanks for that. Uh, Greg, is there any further questions or comments? I know I'll have to... Uh, Maybe if I can look to finance um, on the potential of where funds could come from. I'm not sure if uh, either Wayne or Jennifer uh, can speak to that. Uh, yes, Chief. Uh, the most uh, suitable source would be from the OFNLP sports teams fund. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Wayne. Is the budget? Uh, what's the total? Like we still have obviously dollars within that fund itself. This would be an allocation over and above what the current residual amount is in the fund. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Wayne. Are there any further questions or comments? I do. It's Melba. Sure, yeah. Melba. Yeah, I think it's very important to uh, certainly support all of our, our athletes. And I think over the years, um, they've certainly done their duty in, in providing entertainment and uh, excitement support for our community. So I would, uh, when the motion is necessary, I would make that motion to provide 18,000. Okay, thanks, uh, Melba. There's a mover, a motion on the floor uh, to support uh, the uh, Riverman uh, with a total budget of $18,000. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Audrey. Are there any further questions or comments?
Okay, seeing or hearing none, then I'll look to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. I'll waive Melba. Moved by Melba, seconded by Audrey to waive second reading on the previous motion. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Marco. And again, uh, on behalf of council, joining um, Councillor Greg and congratulating yourself and the team uh, and wishing you all the best and safe travels. So again, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Great day. Okay, council, we're going to continue moving along the agenda here. The next item is the adoption of the general finance minutes of July 17th. Uh, Chief, I got a question. Sure, Sherry Lynn. Sorry, I'm in the same boat as um, Helen <laughs> regarding my iPad too. I've been trying to get it going. Um, question regarding um, the email that we had regarding on all Ontarios. Is that on there? We all got an email regarding funding. They wanted, um, and it's this weekend. We'll add that on to new, the, the end of the uh, agenda, Sherry Lynn. Okay, sorry about that. I just thought it was on there. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for that reminder. Okay, looking, going back to the minutes. Looking to any questions, comments, looking to mover, seconder, moved by Nathan, seconded by Greg to adopt the general finance minutes of July 17th. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Our next item is in relation to social services of the construction of a new elders facility. I believe uh, Arliss is online. Uh, Arliss, if you could provide us with a high level overview to this item, and then we'll look to further discussion and decision. So good morning, Arliss. Good morning, everyone. Um, hope everybody's enjoying this rainy day. Okay, so um, uh, this one, is for the um, partnership with housing. We are we currently have the resolution that would um, support the development and design of that um, structure. This um, briefing that would just explicitly puts social services as um, working in and completing that design for the um, structure that we're looking at for alternative care program on Harold Road, Harold Lane. So we've defined it to become um, initial, the initial phase will be um, 16 units with a possible expansion of eight units and 28 units under housing program for their for the seniors elders complex. The difference for this program and why it's coming from social is the alternate care program. We know there are a number of um, individuals in the community caring for um, family members. And this would provide that um, support, that housing support for those individuals. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Arliss, for that overview. I'll look to open the floor up for any further questions or comments. I'm going to first begin with my question. So has everybody, um, I just noticed on the briefing uh, signatures, has everybody seen this design, Arliss? We're not to that phase yet of, of actually um this this just verifies that social has the intent to work with housing to do that design um, housing that. housing has already received that consent and um we've finalized it more it was a 20 unit um in, initially and we're going with 16 and 8. okay thanks Arliss further questions or comments Uh, I do. Melba? Yes. Arliss, um, explain a little more about alternate care. What uh, what provisions will be there to provide alternate care and the connections you'll have to other areas such as the housing that is in place now? 
Um, currently, any housing that's identified for seniors, there are restrictions on occupancy. So if I needed um, alternate care, like if I was going to care for one of my siblings or siblings' children or extended family members, and I needed a place so that I could provide care for them, and I was in the seniors, identified seniors housing, I would not be able to do that because of the um, policies that restrict um, the occupancy of those of those units. So this will expand that so that um, these specific housing units will be able to provide that um, house or apartment for individuals to do that, to provide that alternate care. So how big are the units? Are they all two bedroom or? There'll be various. I think we've got we have some that will be three bedrooms and some that will be four. And like I said, we're just we're just in the initial phase of designing those. Um, so this just gives us a consent to move into those conversations. But yeah, there'll be more than one bedroom, more than two bedrooms. Two bedrooms would be the smallest. Um, and it's also going to be handicap accessible. So we've, we're finding that as well. Like if there's um, someone in the townhouses that does take take their extended family member, a lot of those townhouses have stairs and they're not accessible. So this, this unit will be accessible. So hopefully with those individuals that are caring that are in some of the townhouses at the housing would be able to move into these houses as well, or these apartments as well, and um, be accessible with no stairs. It'll all be one, one, not one floor, it'll be two floors, but the home will be on one floor. It won't be, there won't be stairs, right? So there won't be an upstairs and a downstairs for bedrooms because we're hearing that as well, that if there's an elderly person that has trouble with stairs, they aren't able to go upstairs to check on the kids and, and um, you know, do some of that housework that they need to do. This will eliminate some of those accessibility barriers. Sounds really good, oh, Arles. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Melba. I'll shift over to Audrey. Uh, yes. Good morning, Arles. Hello. There is a new list being started for an occupant. Okay. Are you taking the list from? The Are you in a meeting? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, just call me when you're done. All right. Sorry. Did you hear us? I did not. Sorry. Okay, I'll try again. I'd like to know if you are starting a new list for people to um, apply for, or are you starting with the people who are already in a townhouse? We haven't started. We haven't started those conversations yet. Um, but yeah, we probably would look at those that are already in the townhouse and those that are in um, substandard housing and caring for children. And that will once you know once we get the sixteen done and maybe maybe as we're going through, we'll need to know. Well, we may need to identify that right away. We need to do those twenty four units. Um, but working with housing on their side. Um, as well, they're looking at mo moving some of their um, residents also into um, accessible housing. Yeah, well. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Audrey. Over to you, Greg. Yeah, hi, uh, Arliss. Um, yeah, the, um, the question I had was, um, I guess the final funding, I think you've got uh, ISC was providing for the pre-construction pre phase. Um, and uh, I think you're working on to um, obtaining funding for the final construction. Um, is there is there money available uh, presently to do that to do to get into the final phase? Yes, there is. Arliss, sorry, did you hear Greg's question? I did. He asked about funding. Um, for the final phase? Yes. Yes. Well, not for the final phase, but for the 24, the initial, the initial, the initial phase, the 24, um, we do have 
access um, for funding. That's why it has to be tied to alternative care as well. Alternative care, yes. Great, thank you. Okay, is there any further questions or comments for Arliss? Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing any at this point in time. There's a recommendation on our agendas. <clears throat> I'll look to a mover and seconder. Moved by Audrey. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Greg. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Audrey. Seconded by Greg. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Okay, thank you, Nyawa Arliss. Is there anything further on your end? Uh, not at this time. Okay, thanks, Arliss. Enjoy thank you. Uh, your day as well. Yeah, I'll be back later. Already. Okay, Council, we're continue moving along here. Our next item is in relation to the Six Nations Anti-Bullying Task Force budget. As you recall, our last update on the reporting uh, was looking to the operating budget itself. It should be within your packages. I'll look to, I'm not sure. Oh, yes, I see Jen. Jen Mount Pleasant online. Maybe, Jen, if you would like uh, to give us just a quick overview to the operating budget itself. Okay. Um, so, hi, good morning, everybody. Um, so I submitted two budgets at the advice of the core team. <clears throat> the first, um, so we submitted a like an actual budget, which is just like kind of like the bare necessities of what we need to operate. Um, and then we also submitted a needs budget, which includes a few extra things of um, just like additional uh, resources and expenses that would really help um, us with the work that we have to do. So I'll start with the actual budget. <clears throat> is It includes um, salary-wise is to hire transcribers. So we're running some focus groups in um, throughout the month of September. And <clears throat> when you run a focus group, you um, normally record it. And then you have to transcribe it word for word. And that's how our like uh, data analyst extracts the data is from those transcriptions. We have honorariums for all non-elected uh, council committee members. And there's some advertising in there. So <clears throat> advertising in both local papers. Uh, we wanted to do a short video on uh, bullying, anti-bullying, and uh, have various community members uh, speak on the importance of, um, you know, using your good minds. And that would be like just a short five to 10 minute video that would get played at, it could get played anywhere, really at events. It could get posted on the website, on social media pages. We also wanted to run a, um, have a web page on council's website. So there's a fee for that. Um, we are in need of more anti-bullying t-shirts. So that is the actual budget. And so the needs budget contains all of what's in the actual budget and the additional costs in the needs budget is um, so one, we, we do have a sub working group right now for that are reviewing policies. So we have about 11, we collected 11 community policies, mostly workplace related policies, as well as educational policies around lateral violence and bullying. And the goal of that sub working group is to just analyze those policies and <clears throat> Uh, do like a gap analysis, figure out if those policies are working. If not, you know, what kind of recommendations can we make to make those policies more effective? The only thing with that is we did have three policy analysts on that sub working group, as well as myself. We recently lost one. Um, they are pursuing uh, 
their education so they can no longer participate on that policies group. So that leaves us down to two. And it's just, we had a meeting last week and we discussed uh, next steps and it was just decided that it's too much. It, it's going to be too much to for this working group to do because those policy, those two policy analysts uh, have full time jobs as well. Um, so we decided uh, to put that in the needs budget to hire to kind of outsource that work and and hire a, a consulting firm that specializes in policy review. So we have made contact with one, like we have heard back so far from one of those consulting firms and just to get a rough estimate of what that cost might look like. And uh, so we don't have a, we weren't given a specific cost yet because um, we haven't really sat down with them to let them know exactly what we're looking for, but it's probably, we figure it's probably going to be between 30 and $50,000. So that would be in the needs budget. And then there's just some little extra uh, in terms of advertising, uh, some extra, uh, you know, like flyers, distribution, brochures, things like that. Um, and then in the community engagement section, in the uh, the needs budget is just uh, so we wanted to set up a booth at the fall fair, for example, that does cost. Uh, there is a fee for that. We were wanting to, uh, at some point uh, in a couple of months down the road, once we start to uh, work out those draft recommendations is to present them to the community um, to get their feedback. And so we were are wanting to plan like an in-person event for that. So, and then provide a meal as well. So that's in the needs budget. And I just wanted to um, make a note that something I just realized this morning, reviewing the needs budget is there was a mistake on my part in calculation in the community engagement events. I forgot the, to add the, the approximate um, catering fee for that so that's uh i just wanted to mention that so instead of the community engagement was like a total of four thousand it's actually if you add the catering onto that it's eight thousand what bumps up the uh needs budget to 33 uh, i think it was at twenty nine thousand. so it is up to thirty three thousand now okay Thank you, Nyala, so much, uh, Jen, for putting this uh, budget uh, together. I know, obviously, it's uh, it's important that we look um, to supporting uh, this budget, as I know there's there's uh, much uh, work happening already, even prior to this budget uh, being approved. I, my only question is in relation to, I know, uh, at your bottom total, um, which, again, it should reflect which around 33000 uh, doesn't include the hiring of a consulting firm for policy uh, policies review your your sub working group i'm wondering is there any um i guess in a sense i know we're, we're we're already kind of at capacity i guess in some areas within our own policy department but i'm wondering if there's any in kind contributions that could be allotted in that way so looking maybe with um uh, with darren uh, to see that if we can have any assistance from any of our our staff on uh, the policy reviews or policies review um, team. So we do have, um, we actually had two uh, council employees who are policy analysts, as well as the the other policy analysts is from federal schools. Um, and I did, I have been in contact with Dwayne Jacobs, uh, and he's the one who uh, offered one of his policy analysts. And then we recently lost the other policy analysts. And so I reached out to Dwayne again, and I don't believe that council has any other policy analysts is my understanding. But yeah, we already tried that. Okay, perfect. Okay, is there any further questions or comments for Jen in relation to the operating budget of the anti-bullying task force? I do, it's Melba. Sure, Melba. Yeah, 
I see you're doing a lot of work and you have a lot of uh, members that are taking part in 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 what's happening around bullying and lateral violence. Just wondering how you're fitting this in with the agencies. I mean, it's it sounds like good work and people are there, but uh, it's gone beyond bullying and lateral violence as we know in this community. So how is that connected to what you're doing? How are the people being helped? And I'm talking about drug abuse, of course. How is that happening? The relationships. Um, so if I'm understanding you correctly, um, it sounds like you're talking about community engagement. How are we engaging with the community? Is that correct? Yes. Um, so like we don't provide direct services to community members. The task force acts in more or less an advisory capacity. So our ultimate goal is to do that community engagement figure out how bullying looks like to everybody because everybody does experience it differently. And then we use the, that community, um, those community experiences, and we in turn figure out ways in which we could help combat um, those stories that we're hearing that involve bullying. And our ultimate goal is to, all we do is we make recommendations back to band council and that's what's essentially um, a task force does and so we like we when we do so for example if we do hear from community members you know if they contact us and want to give us their story about their bullying experiences uh, we sit down with them we hear their story we listen to them you know we acknowledge them and at the end uh, of the conversation uh, we can ask them if they need community resources. And we do have a list of like trauma resources that we could give them. And then it would be, um, they would be need to be the ones that reach out to those, connect with those resources to um, like make an appointment to, to come in. Um, in terms of drug abuse, I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Well, all of this you know, certainly is connected to drug abuse in the homes and in the community. Lateral violence, for example, bullying. As I said, it goes beyond that, obviously, because we have deaths. Uh, what, about seven within the last month and a half or so? So thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, uh, you mentioned engagement. So. I re do realize that's very important. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Melba. Just um, as I was uh, listening to your question, I think maybe Jen as well. A, a connector piece would be uh, part of this, the drug strategy committee, perhaps to see where there could be some further connectors um, in relation to the work that you're already doing. I know, uh, obviously, with health and social and everybody else involved, but. Uh, I think another maybe piece would look to the high risk committee as well, uh, because I think that's, again, Malva is right. It's all interconnected. Um, and if we can uh, get as many, because like, this is this is a community <laughs> solution. And I, I believe to your point, Jen, of the recommendations coming forward from the task force uh, would then look to some of that work starting to be implemented, whatever that those recommendations look like. So I guess if I could suggest maybe to Malva's point to include uh, maybe the drug strategy committee as well as the high risk committee to see if, uh, you know, that you could look to uh, further presentations um, from them or to, to them rather. Yeah, we, so I have been in contact with Eve already from drug strategy and I am sitting on the high risk committee as well. Okay. So that, that's really good, good to note. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that, uh, Jen. I do have uh, Greg who has a question comment next. Greg? Yeah, um, hi, Jen. Yeah, thank you for your report. Uh, my question is, it's just um, in terms of uh, data and reporting. 
Um, my question would be like, how far along are you with uh, accumulating any data or being able to present, even as a preliminary, a report um, to council? Um, <clears throat> so right now, in terms of data collection, we have, we're running three surveys and then uh, conducting focus groups. So we have the community survey has been out for a while now. Um, I was just speaking with our health epidemiologist uh, who's on the surveys and evaluation team. And she said that we have approximately 170 community surveys conducted so far. And our goal is 200. So we only need about 30 more um, before we can start analyzing that data. And we can definitely get you um, present a preliminary report on those community uh, adult surveys. In terms of the other data, we're still working with the, um, we are working with the Grand Erie District School Board who have uh, already approved our youth survey to go into their area high schools um, for Six Nations youth students. Um, so that will take place hopefully in September. And we should be able to analyze that data relatively quickly. <clears throat> then we have the staff surveys that we are going to be doing in October. Um, so we won't have uh, anything for that until probably late October. Um, but yes, uh, we can definitely do like a preliminary uh, data analysis on those community surveys. So, um, I'm not sure, like, do you do what I need to go? Do you want me to go before general counsel and present to the whole community on those findings? Yeah, it would be nice to see yeah, if um, we get, even if it's periodic reports, it's always good to see that, um, you know, that you guys are working hard at it and um, in providing some information. Sometimes we can use that as uh, looking towards trends and uh, which um, which the way we have to go in terms of disseminating that information. So yeah, that would be that would be fine at your at your basically when it's done at your convenience too as well. Great, thanks. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Greg, uh, for those points. I have Sherry Lynn next. Um, I'm not sure if you're at this point, but I guess my, and if you are, uh, my question is, how are you getting the information or awareness um, out in the community, meaning at the arenas in our organizations, just so it can be um, seen all the time and what um, bullying and lateral violence is about? Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so, what are we doing? Uh, we do have a Facebook page that we created a few weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> from that, we're able to see that uh, approximately, I think 750 people have, visit, have visited that page uh, in the past three weeks. Um, we're trying to get that uh, website or web page up and running so people can go on the web page and <clears throat> it'll have you know like our objectives and links to our surveys and things like that um i have been attending community events uh the last one i attended was last week at the um autism awareness event uh at polytech that was put on by child and youth health i believe there are events uh <clears throat> there's one called, I think it's Fun Extravaganza uh, next Tuesday. That's a community event. Um, there's the Suicide Awareness in early September. I'll be at that event. Um, I'll also be, hopefully have a booth at the fall fair. I'll, I'll be doing a presentation at the fair too. So uh, watch for details on that. So we're basically, <clears throat> because we don't have... Um, you know, funding to uh, what we're basically doing is just kind of like piggybacking off of other events, uh, community events. So when we hear about them, uh, we just try to register them and attend. So that's pretty much what we're doing right now. Do you follow up? Sure, sure. 
So I would like to add money for the prevention into this budget because the more people are aware and um, it's out in the community, because I know back, um, I think it was last term or the first term, maybe both, they, they did toilet talk, I think it was called, and it was behind the, in the stalls in the bathrooms. They've done the boards at the arenas, you know? So I'm just thinking um, the, the prevention part of it, I would just like to see more of it. I, I know you're out in the community, but I just want it to, to um, um, be, out, be out in the community when you're not there. <laughs> that was all. So I would like to add, add the prevention part to it also. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Sherilyn, for your comments. I have uh, Audrey next. Good morning. I'd like to know how you're interacting with the federal schools and the other schools. Uh, so we do have a representative from federal schools uh, on the task force. Uh, he's on the core team as well as the policies review subworking group. Um, and he's been uh, pretty active uh, attending all our meetings and uh, engaging. So, you know, there's some good stuff happening behind the scenes there. Other schools, um, at one point we did have a representative from Go and Neil, but they weren't on the task force for too long. Uh, they actually left their position there and um, we still haven't been able to get a representative from, from Go and Neil. Um, we did have somebody from Grand, I think it was Grand Erie District School Board. <clears throat> um, and we're still in communication with her. Like she is helping us with the youth surveys in uh, Grand Erie High Schools. So that's what's going on there in terms of working with schools. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Jen. And just just going back to uh, to Sherry Lynn's uh, comments in relation to the prevention side of things, um, I'm wondering because it's kind of it's kind of a twofold, right? Which you've already kind of highlighted through your advertising piece. So maybe it's an increase in that area as well as your community engagement area. Because we have to re remember that we're going to, this is only a task force at this point. So to Jen's earlier comments uh, is that we would look to the recommendations once the task force has completed those to then further the, the work itself and what those recommendations look like. Is that the same understanding that you have as well, Jen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So maybe what we could do just to, to Sherry Lynn's point, though, is maybe increase or add maybe I think even $5,000, maybe $2,500 in each area of community engagement and advertising, just because I, I recognize Sherry Lynn's uh, comments as well uh, in relation to that, you know, prevention side. Now, again, keeping in mind that there's obviously still work that would uh, that would still happen once the recommendations are complete. So I think that would increase your budget total then to 38,000. Is that correct? Uh, I think with a $5,000 increase from 33. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. And just also really quickly, if we could check in with our finance team, uh, either Jennifer or Wayne, uh, would source of funds be identified as OFN LP? Or is there another? Um, yes. Chief, yes, that would be the likely source, um, if I may make sure. Point. Um, since the federal schools are involved, have they been approached for any possible funding? To be honest, we can work uh, with Travis on that, um, like to see where where they can maybe offset some cost. So I can have a, I can have a conversation with Travis on that. Any further questions or comments, Nathan? I do one. I do one last question. Do you have anyone on your com Do you have anyone on your committee, Jen, that uh, actively practices our traditional ways, uh, considering our beliefs and uh, our behaviors in the community? Do you have anyone there that can be an advisor, for example? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so at one point we did have um, like an official uh, knowledge holder um, 
but she's no longer on the task force. So we that spot is still kind of vacant, but we do have like, uh, we have knowledge holders who just aren't like, you know, they don't, that's not their official title uh, or official job. Um, but they're still, they, they hold a lot, a lot of knowledge, uh, Haudenosaunee knowledge, and we have language speakers on the committee as well. So we do get um, guidance from them. Thank you. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks, Malva. Over to you, Nathan. So to just confirming the amount would be 38 from all Sunday. Okay, I'll move. Okay, we have a motion on the floor uh, for a total amount of a uh, uh, budget of $38,000. It's moved by Nathan as our seconder. Seconded by Greg. Further questions or comments? Again, source of funds identified as OFNLP. So we'll include that within the motion. Seeing no further questions or comments, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading, moved by Nathan, seconded by Greg. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, Jen, well, again, congratulations and please uh, keep up the great work. Uh, we'll look to do some status updates in the coming weeks to see where that work is. Uh, and then also, again, um, if there's anything further that you need, please reach out. I do have one last question. Oh, sure. <clears throat> um, so it appears that the, the needs budget has been approved. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, so just in terms of the, the policies, uh, doing the consulting firm, um, I'm just wondering about that. Can we maybe have a creative conversation, maybe uh, in terms of Wayne's comments? Maybe I'll touch base with the uh, the federal schools um, just to see if there's any, because I know we were going back and forth on some funds anyways. So maybe this is an area where that could potentially be funded. But I also see Darren has his hand raised. So maybe he can offer some suggestions in that area as well. Darren? Yeah, thanks. I mean, you, you pretty much covered it there, Chief, um, in terms of the next steps regarding that. Um, I know that, uh, Jen, you've exhausted uh, sort of our capacity on our side, but I think there's probably some flexibility in some of the other deferred funds that we have, um, either under social or health, that we could apply uh, to that particular initiative. So I'll definitely follow up with you offline on that. Okay, that's really good. Thanks for that, Darren. So maybe, Jen, I'll allow yourself and Darren to maybe go back and forth on that specific, and then we'll bring that back at our next finance meeting to go from that point. Okay, awesome. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Nyawa. Have a great day. Keep Thank you. Work. Thanks, everybody. Okay, Council, we're going to continue moving along here with our agenda. Our next item is in relation to the Parks and Recreation Department of a letter of support. I believe we have our director, Cheryl Henhock, online in relation to Play on Canada, which is a ball hockey tournament. You'll see the, con uh, the content of the letter and the recommendation on our agendas. And that being said, I'll welcome uh, our director, Cheryl. Uh, good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Chief and Council and others. We will, uh, what we'll do, Cheryl, is uh, pass the floor over to yourself to give us a high level overview to this recommendation. Okay. So the Indigenous Wellness, uh, Sports and Wellness of Ontario approached their Parks and Rec Department earlier this year. Actually, I think it was late last year, uh, looking for a letter of support and uh, commitment from Six Nations of the Grand River to host a street ball hockey festival. Uh, it would be the first festival that held in our First Nations community. Uh, this event has been um, televised on television by uh, CBC in the past. Uh, there, It's apparently a 20 year old event already. I didn't realize it was that long, but it's um, quite, has quite the history. Uh, it has been um, hosted by or moved over to Sportsnet. So Sportsnet and uh, this organization called Play on Canada, uh, they approached ISWO or Indigenous Sport and Wellness Ontario looking for a First Nations community. So Danielle Johnson, who works at ISWO, appro approached us 
And being from the community, she suggested that we, Six Nations should host this event. So it is before us and before council uh, to request your approval to host this street ball hockey event in 2024. The proposed date is May of May 10th to the 12th of 2024. They're um, they have they're looking for a commitment um, in of a letter of support. Um, commitment to say yes, we will host, and a financial contribution of two thousand two hundred and forty dollars from from parks or, or from the council. Um, this two thousand two hundred forty dollars would be used to help hire staff, which I believe are already in place. Because on June seventh, uh, Cindy Thomas and Lee Thompson met with the representatives from Play on Canada and and Indigenous Sports and Wellness uh, Ontario. And the, they've hired uh, two persons already who are working on this project. Um, one of the persons is Ashton Bombery. She's a former um, Parks and Rec summer student. So we're well familiar with her. Uh, they will strike a committee. Um, Play on Canada will basically run the whole event. Um, they will have staff that would come on, on site and set up uh, where the location is to be determined. Still, that still has to be done. Um, and through their staff that they have hired, they will plan this whole event for us. So um, what is before, um, I have contacted um, Jennifer Court back in early August, I believe it was on August 2nd, and, and Jennifer replied to me and stated that, yes, we could handle the $2,240 from Parks and Recreation's current year budget of 2022-23-24 or budget. Um, that that amount could come from us, from Parks and Rec. So um, that's all I have at this point to um, to give to you. Okay, thank you, Nyawa, so much, uh, Cheryl, for giving us uh, that overview. Uh, looking to open the floor up for any further questions or comments. First, beginning with Audrey. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning. Um, do they require to have asphalt to play on? And um, is it going to be in more than one place, one site on Six Nations? That is still to be de to be determined. Uh, first question, yes, they would probably need asphalt to, uh, to play on. Um, I know they haven't determined the site yet. Um, so whether they'd have to get permission to maybe block off a street somewhere, probably, you know, uh, I'm not sure or whether we use the parking lot here at the uh, um, in front of the community hall in the arena. Um, that could be an option. It's just that our parking lot is rather rolling as it has some slopes in it too. So it still has to be determined. So I'm unsure uh, where that discussion is and, and what they're planning on that in that regard. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay, thanks, uh, Nyawa, for that. Uh, Audrey, over to you, Nathan. Well, thanks, Chief, and, and uh, thanks for the update, Cheryl. This, uh, this is a really great initiative for, for the community um, from a number of perspectives, uh, at that being one of them as well. Um, but uh, I don't really have any questions. I'm just prepared to move this. Okay, thanks. Uh, we uh, Thanks, Nathan. We have a motion on the floor, a mover uh, to uh, look to the recommendation. Uh, with the therefore be it resolved, is there a seconder? Second it with a question over to you, Greg. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Cheryl. Um, just to give us a brief synopsis, I know that uh, your briefing um, note and information said that be um, um, a fairly large economic impact for the community. Um, I know they previously had it in Hamilton, and they. I, surmise that it was around uh, two million dollars in terms of um, the you know all of the services they use and all of the vendors we use and everything like that in places to stay is did they give you um did they give you an estimate of what it would uh, what type of economic impact it would have in on in six nations I don't recall reading that uh, note in their pre their presentation because I did attach a package that they had presented. Uh, back on June 7th to Cindy and Lee. I didn't attend that meeting, unfortunately. I was at another meeting. Um, so they, um, I know they, they were saying that it's been a couple years too that since this event has been held because of COVID. 
And so they're now just trying to re-energize it, reintroduce it and get it going again. I guess they were up to like 4,000 um, persons uh, participating in the event prior to COVID, but they're estimating, you know, that it's because again, it's a restart. They're not sure that 4,000 would come to our community uh, to uh, have this event. Um, so, but it's, uh, and so I don't, I guess the short answer is, I'm sorry, I don't know what the direct uh, dollar value would be to the community. Uh, great, thank you. I think I think that's a good good question though, and maybe uh, to to Greg's point and to Nathan's, you know, it's a great initiative. Where can we further collaborate on within our own programs and services as well as our business community? And I think that happens to be around community awareness. So maybe if there's a lot of uh, you know uh, items can be tied into this to see that we get our best. Uh, I guess, benefit from this event. Uh, I guess even too inclusive to, we know we have our current ball hockey rink already, not not saying that's gonna be enough, but um, hopefully, obviously, I think I would assume to Audrey's earlier question that it would be in the vicinity around the parks and recreation area already. So hopefully that uh, can be further worked out. But I would, I, I'd like Greg's question as well to uh, maybe further collaborate with our businesses, our, our programs and services, uh, to see that we get the best uh, or the most out of the uh, economic benefits within hosting these types of events. Um, over to you, Audrey. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, how many Hi. can uh, play from Six Nations? So I'm not. I'm unsure. Uh, we, you know, we don't have any leagues that play in our uh, at our ball hockey rink right at the moment. But I know we do have a significant number of uh, persons from our community who travel to uh, Bradford and play. Actually, Teresa's a ball former, I'm sure she she has played ball hockey. Uh, maybe she could give us a better idea on that, Teresa Longboat, um, as to how many participate. But I know we have several teams that have played in the city of Bradford in their ball hockey leagues. Um, and that was one of the reasons way back, you know, back in 2016 or earlier before that, that we, you know, built the ball hockey rink was to, and, to try and generate our own leagues, but unfortunately it still hasn't gone off the ground yet. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that uh, response. Uh, Cheryl, over to you, Melba. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, just briefly. Yeah, perhaps uh, our tourism staff could be of help to create awareness and uh, uh, education and activities possibly, if that's what may be involved in, in the event, thanks. For sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks, yeah, well, for that, uh, Melba. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Again, a great initiative. I think there's uh, we're we're too early on to know more of the details, but I'm sure those details will be uh, worked out uh, in the coming months and leading up to the event itself. Uh, so that being said, I'll look uh, to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Nathan, seconded by Greg. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Okay, now I thank you so much, uh, Cheryl, for joining us this morning. I believe that completes uh, your agenda items. For now, I have one in, in camera, so. Okay, no problem. We'll see you there. Thank you, Cheryl. Right. Yeah. Okay, Council, we're continue, uh, continuing to move on with our agenda. The next item is in relation to KPMG invoices. Uh, you'll see that this is in relation to the audit itself. And I know there's a, a question on new business on audit. So maybe what we can do is I'll shift over to Wayne and Jennifer uh, to walk us through again, just uh, the invoice itself, if there's any high level points. And as well, maybe what we can do is while we're on it, is touch on what is the status of the audit as that was a new business item added from Helen. So maybe I'll leave it to who is going to begin, Wayne. Thanks, Chief. So we'll deal firstly with the invoices. So there are two invoices on the agenda. The first one is for the uh, interim billing for the fiscal 23 audit, which is the um, current fiscal year. Um, the total approved um, fees for the main audit, which this bill pertains to is $86,000. So is the, this is the first interim bill. 
The second is for the special audits, and these are audits that are required by external funding agencies. And we have upwards of about 35 special audits on an annual basis that are required to be prepared and submitted to our funders. Um, and so this is for the work for the last years, for the fiscal 22 year that have been completed to date. So we are underway with the fiscal 23 special audits as well at the same time. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Wayne. Let's let's maybe pause there. So those are on the invoices. Are there any questions or comments in relation to the recommendation on the agenda? Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing none. So I will look and call for a mover and seconder. Moved by Audrey, seconder. Seconded by Nathan. Any final further questions or comments? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading, moved by Audrey, seconder. Seconded by Nathan to waive second reading on the previous motion. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, we'll be back over to you, uh, Wayne and Jennifer, on the audit itself. And this is, again, a new business item that was brought up from Helen. So the um, at the last agenda preparation of the review meeting last Wednesday, the final audit draft um, was not prepared, thus it was not put on the agenda. Um, subsequent to that date, the final audit is ready for presentation. Um, I did share that information with Darren. Um, I'm not sure if that it has been communicated. Anyway, KPMG is prepared to present um, at the end of the in-camera session today if Chief and Council are in agreement. Okay, thank you for that update. So we'll look to, again, our next steps on the process to have that uh, vetted through council first and then as well to the community. So that hope, is there any questions or comments to that? Okay, I'm seeing or hearing none, so I'll go to our next, and Yawa, thank you for that. Wayne and Jennifer, I'll look to our next uh, item on our agenda, which is the public works road, uh, tw our 23 road resurfering tenders. I believe we have our Director of Public Works online, Mr. Michael Mentor. I'll uh, pass, good morning, Mike. I'll pass the floor over to yourself again to give us a, a high level uh, overview to uh, the recommendation on the agenda. So good morning and over to you, Mike. Say and good morning, Chief and Council and community. Uh, Michael Mentor, Director of Public Works for Six Nations of the Grand River community here. A um, bit of good news. <laughs> So I know I know roads are uh, have been a you know one of the priorities as per the the uh, community questionnaire that was done earlier this year and we've done a lot of work around getting the these tenders and and roads prepped. Um, so last year we had a road need study which really guided our selection of what roads to resurface this year, and uh, as per the that uh, community questionnaire, when roads came back high on the list, uh, we made sure we put a lot of money aside last year for this year. Um, I would note that uh, we did go to tender in the springtime. Uh, the challenge that we face as a, as a small First Nation that does maybe, you know, three to four road sections per year, uh, we're, com we're, com we're competing against MTO projects and uh, our neighboring municipalities who do, you know, upwards of 20 to 30 road sections per year, which impacts, you know, the bidder interest. So the bidders want the big jobs that pay a lot of money um, when, when we're, we just can't compete at that level. However, I know that Councillor Kerry Bombery had done a lot of work with our technical services department and uh, specifically Vince Longboat did a lot of work in uh, getting these prices. So uh, really happy to have the money to do this and to be able to do six road sections this year. And once approved today, um, they could be ready to go as early as Monday, start the work. Um, road sections to scheduled to be resurfaced this year are second line between Tuscarora and Onondaga, second line between Onondaga and Cuga, third line between Chiefswood and Tuscarora, sixth line between Cuga and Oneida, 
Cougar Road between second and third, and Cougar Road between fifth and sixth. So very long overdue. Um, the we had three bids. The bidder that we're we're um, recommending here is the lowest compliant bidder, who was Dufferin Construction Company, and the amount of the award. So we incorporate also a contingency within that as per our procurement policy. So uh, the amount of the award is. $2,827,242.60. And that's for the six sections of road. Any questions, please let me know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Nyawa, so much. I, uh, Mike, I join you in your uh, excitement uh, with getting our roads uh, resurfaced. I know it's been on our community's uh, priority list. So I'm really pleased. I know our council is really pleased to see that six roads will be done. And yes, hopefully we can. Let's start yesterday. <laughs> Over to you, Carrie. Yeah, just a question to Mike. Uh, there's Chiswood that is going, it's not in this tender, but it's a road that was to be done last year, but it's going to be done this year. I I talked to your test, tech person and he hasn't given me a date if it, uh, to confirm that it's going to be done this year. That's the Chiswood between Fifth and Miracle Mans. Yeah, so the the North Lake of Bicentennial Trail and Fifth Line, that section of Cheesewood Road. Um, so that was actually awarded last year to a vendor. Um, and yeah, we just need to get dates and confirm that. But once we do, I know that uh, communications has been um, following up on a request to council to get some, some better, I guess, uh, communication out about the roads need study and what roads and dates. So now that we have a tender uh, and dates, We'll definitely get something out. We'll get an update and we'll make sure we wrap that up. Make sure council is aware and the community is aware as well. But yes, that's scheduled to be completed this year as well. So that's, you know, seven sections, which is good progress. Um, and definitely thank you to the community for responding to all of the, uh, to the, the survey. And I would encourage uh, in future surveys, community participation, because it really guides our work. Now. Yeah. Really appreciate that. And thanks. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Mike. <clears throat> I know, again, just on your last point, Mike, on the, com on the comm side, so yeah, if we can work with our communications team, because I know we'll have to, to our community, there's obviously going to be now um, a little bit of construction happening within our roads, which means uh, we need to all be safe while traveling uh, these roads and speed and so forth. So we'll get proper notice out ASAP um, on each of these and when they start and, and et cetera. So do appreciate all of that uh, as well. Thanks for that, Daryl. I see your comment in the chat. That being said, who is prepared to move this? I think, well, I think we're all ready to move on this. <laughs> Moved by Nathan, seconder, second by Greg. I'll second that. <laughs> we'll, give, we'll give it to Carrie, Greg. <laughs> seconded by Carrie. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing a motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Nathan. Seconder. Yes, I will. Seconded by Kerry to waive second reading on the previous motion. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing a motion is carried. Okay, Mike, congratulations again and look forward to seeing this work begin. Hi, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Mike. You as well. Okay, Council, um, there was one more item. Okay, oh yes, sorry, Helen. Yeah, I just I just grasped what um, Wayne had said about putting the audit on at the end of the finance meeting. Uh, that's me totally inappropriate. Council hasn't even seen the audit. We've had no chance to read through it thoroughly, prepare any questions that we might have. To present it at the end of a finance meeting is to me totally inappropriate because we wouldn't even have time to look through it. We're going to rush through the presentation. And that's, I don't know about the rest of council, but I think it's inappropriate. I want to be able to sit down and read the audit and go through it thoroughly and come up with any questions I might have ahead of time so that when it is presented to council, I am fully prepared to ask my questions. and the audit and approve the audit okay that's that's the exercise that we're about to embark <laughs> on so i'm not sure what what you're 
what your questions are because I haven't, we them. haven't read the audit. We haven't even seen the audit to read it. That's I what need we're, to read it. We need to walk through it first, Helen. We need to no. To we walk through it after we read it. People can have the questions and actually see it itself. Sorry, I have Nathan who has a question comment. Over to wait, you, Nathan. Wait, well. Yeah, just maybe as a, a a way to kind of work through this. In the past, what we've done is we um, got the presentation from the audit because there's usually two, right? There's the audit presentation, and then they present the financial. Can you speak up, Chief? We can't hear him. Can you hear me now? Yeah, good one. Um. So yeah, my my thought was because usually we have to, you know review the audit and then review the financials. There's two specific areas there. We could get the presentation today at the end, but not necessarily pass it right. um, is, is an option. That'll give us time to kind of review it and then pass it at a at a subsequent meeting. That, but, and that, that was going to be my uh, suggestion as well. So at least we can see the audit, hear from the, the, the auditors themselves, present it. We don't have to pass it. We'll look at, look at it, take it home. Prepare the questions what Helen's asking for, and then have them back in for the next to uh, to Nathan's point at another uh, the next meeting. That was the process which I was uh, envisioning, which covers all of Helen's concerns. Helen, well, it sounds good to me, as long as Perfect. we don't approve it. Yeah, we're not until we get a chance to go through it. That's exactly, it. and then we'll still have to again approve to get it out to community. The whole point is transparency and accountability. We're not looking to hide anything. Any further questions or comments? Audrey? Maybe that could be written down as part of the one of our policies. And that way we don't revisit this again and again. Sure. Yeah, well. Good point. Thanks for that, Audrey. Okay. Uh, our next our Last item is just a quick update on uh, council and where we've been the last couple of days. A, a number of councillors and ourselves, as well as our staff, uh, have uh, attended the AMO conference, which uh, is the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Council has been engaged with AMO for probably over a decade now at this point. Uh, we see great value in attending AMO, even though, again, we make it very clear at AMO that we are not a municipality uh, and that we're there. Uh, again, to discuss our issues with, again, our neighbors and as well as cabinet and as many government officials that we can from the province. Uh, and so we had a number of uh, meetings uh, with a number of government officials um, from, again, Minister Greg Rickford to Minister David Pacini at Environment to the Solicitor General. Um, who else did we meet? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, infrastructure. Surma, Minister Surma. So again, the whole purpose behind us attending as a Six Nations delegation um, is to have our meetings uh, scheduled with uh, our direct um, uh, ministers, but to also further our goals politically. So what we've been trying to say, for example, uh, at the infrastructure meeting, we're always pushing our water lines our wastewater, our, our continued efforts on our roads, which you've just seen we've passed on, on some progress to get our roads resurfaced. We also uh, brought up Gawaneo School, the building school itself. Um, and so those are some of the pieces that we've uh, been working on uh, as well. So I'm just wanting to, uh, again, it's just we wanted to provide just a brief uh, overview uh, of where we've been the last couple of days. It was hosted in London, Ontario. Um, and so uh, we had a really good couple of days uh, meeting there, uh, and we'll provide a full uh, update and report on the on the next steps and really uh, where do we go from from this point after our meetings. And maybe I'll, what I could do at this point is ask for any uh, counselors if they have any uh, comments that they would like to add uh, to our AMO delegation. Uh, Audrey. Uh, thanks, uh, Mark. Um, one of the things that I think that is um, was really well highlighted by us, Hazel and I both spoke about Gawain EO School. We gave them all the details, all the facts, the costs, the hardships that the staff and students and parents are under. And I think they have to tell those real life stories before people really get it. And about the water, we told real life stories there as well. So that uh, the Minister Serma of... Um, 
infrastructure had a clearer picture. And it was wonderful working with um, our surrounding mayors to um, work on this water initiative. And I, I really, really hope that it goes through for our reserve because it could be one of the best things that ever happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a really good good point. I know we've been working to uh, as best as we can to advocate across the board, and obviously it's going to be both between provincial and federal. Uh, so we're doing our work on the federal side as well. The other piece I think that's important in terms of AMO is the relationship building with our our neighbors. And, and one of those pieces, obviously, we had our neighbors from the city of Brantford, the county of Brant, Haldeman County, Norfolk County. Uh, so there's actually even a, a project that we've been working on for a number of years now at this point uh, with Norfolk and Haldeman to get Lake Erie down Highway 6. That would then connect the south side portion of our territory, which I believe is roughly about 800 homes. Uh, so uh, that's one of our ways that we're trying to speed up and expedite getting water to homes as quickly as possible. And so that was a really good meeting that we had uh, in conjunction with Haldeman County and Norfolk County as well. So uh, again, the really purpose around there is relationship building and, and, and trying to maintain as best as we can, all while still pushing and advocating with the with our um, uh, ministers uh, through the Ontario cabinet uh, to kind of push on some of the other areas as well. Uh, Sherry Lynn. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sherry Lynn, just want to check. Oh, there she is. Yeah, it's just going in and out. Sorry. Um, just a couple of things. Um, it was it was a good couple of meetings. I think um, Regional Chief Hare uh, talk went on the stage before um, uh, Ford, Doug Ford, and um, talked about um, how the chiefs are against the green belt and how the Ministry of Housing should be fired. And there was a lot of good um, applause and real good statements about the green belt and how the chiefs of Ontario um, are, are totally against it. So then next was um, Ford, when he got up there, <laughs> didn't mention nothing about the green belt, <laughs> didn't mention nothing about indigenous people or you know anything, how they're gonna help us. So that's a problem because he was able to tell them um, all the monies that he's giving out for housing and especially 84 million that are go is going to Brantford. And if they get their quota, they, they get like a bonus for all these houses. So that was um, pretty interesting to hear. And still um, there was nothing, um, no monies was mentioned for indigenous um, communities. So that was the first, the first day to start off the, the um, the conference. So I just wanted to share those points and I echo um, everything that you said, Chief, and what Audrey said. Um, it was great. Um, we had a good team that was there. Uh, Christopher set it all up in, in the Chief's office. Uh, it, was, it was really um, beneficial uh, for the needs of our community. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Sherilyn. And yes, really good point that you brought up as well in relation to the green belt, and definitely shared our opposition to that in our next steps. I think it was also uh, uh, nice just to, you know, to continue um, how we're we're operating at this table as well in terms of those political goals and governance. Um, I think that was a, a nice. We're getting a good example of. You know, when we all attend these these types of conferences, one, what is the political goal and what we want to get out of these conferences? And two, how is that reporting look to community and the impact of uh, what we do when attending these types of conferences? So again, really good, uh, good points. Uh, I think Greg has also further uh, points to add. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chief. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I thought that, that that was a very good coordinated effort on our part. I thought we had a a good contingent. Um, we were a large contingent when we met with ministers. Um, we had our support staff um, and our counselors were, had strong voices in every meeting that we uh, took part in. And I also like the fact that, um, Chief, you took the lead on uh, emphasizing the fact that we're not a municipality and that uh, we also, I think it was good for the municipalities to understand our position 
whether it's our court case, whether it's the new walk, the track, and being a friendship walk, I think that uh, they were all receptive uh, to our comments. Our comments are, were quite direct. Um, they appreciated that. And in even with uh, Minister Pacini and how he wants to collaborate and work with our um, environmental department and, and also with, uh, I believe it was so Solicitor General uh, Kersner in establishing our standards and enforcement. And we could start again, like you were saying about environment and uh, get something going in that direction. So overall, it was very beneficial. I think that we should, in further, um, in the future, I think we should always partake in these types of meetings. And it was very beneficial for the community. Definitely. Thank you, Nella, for that, uh, Greg. And just just to uh, further add as well, to we um, we definitely highlighted our walk, our upcoming walk the track uh, event to every meeting and, and pamphlet that we were giving out to to people. Uh, I think it is, and to Greg's point, it is important to to be in these spaces because they're definitely talking about indigenous issues, the municipalities, but there's very minimal indigenous. Uh, representation. And I think that's the other part that we have to kind of start to, I know we've talked about this at the Iroquois caucus of really the terminology of, of Indigenous and that maybe we should start to, in, is, you know, stray away from using that term and more along the lines of First Nations or rather even as, as Haudenosaunee people as how we're referenced because with the Métis matter that's, that's upcoming and, and that we're challenged with, you know, it's almost just furthering of that that pan approach and that that doesn't really work for our people. So I think that's another area that you know we're we're constantly looking at as well. But nonetheless, I do agree with all the uh, the comments. It was a very uh, well um, meeting, and again, I want to say now to Christopher for the coordination of the the meetings that we did have um, and so forth. But at at the end of the day, again. Uh, gave us the opportunity to make our voices loud and clear uh, to, uh, again, there's, there was roughly about 434 municipalities represented uh, at this conference. So it's it's quite a busy conference, but again, I think there needs to be more First Nations inclusion in the discussions that are happening at that specific conference. I know one of the areas that we did go out to a breakout session was specifically on First Nations uh, issues with um, ANWA, the Ontario Women's Association, as well as the um, Ontario Friendship Centers. Uh, I think that's something, again, that we need to uh, keep an, an eye on uh, and to see what that MOU actually looks like in that work and how it's carried out. So I think it was, again, really important to attend uh, that side session. So that was a quick synopsis of our last couple of days in London. Oh, I see Melba would like to add as well. Over to you, Melba. Certainly, it was made clear of our um, our needs uh, and assistance of uh, our Six Nations community. It was really great. Um, but I think uh, uh, Caledonia made it clear they don't want any more violence, and we don't either. We don't want violence and destruction. So we need to uh, quickly um, I schedule a meeting with Caledonia to make it clear where we're at concerning development. So I certainly found it very interesting and tiresome, by the way, a lot of walking, walking. It was a very big and we're at different hotels. I think uh, the community needs to know that, that we're not just sitting as around this chamber and raising our hands. We're moving to different locations and uh, certainly it wasn't good at certain hotels, I guess. So I think we need to do that as follow up, not only with the people that we had addressed, uh, but and invite them as was done in some of the meetings, invite them to our community and follow up immediately, not be lax and, and six months later or more. We need to do it almost immediately and thank them for, for certainly hearing our needs and we want to follow up and uh, have some action attached to it. Thanks. That's a really good point uh, in terms of the follow-up. Uh, Melba, do you agree? Uh, so Christopher, if you can take note on terms of how uh, what that looks like and we can have that brought back forward to council at our next meeting, uh, just in terms of what that follow-up looks like. So that council is well aware of now what is the next steps. So again, do uh, do appreciate everything, uh, Nyawa, for uh, attending our meeting uh, this morning. That does complete our agenda. And at this point in time, I'll look to uh, vote to adjourn. Oh, no, sorry. Chief, oh, my about... apologies. Sorry, all Sherry. Ontarios. Yes, all Ontarios. So Sherry Lynn, sorry, do you want to speak to this matter? 
Uh, um, no, I just no, I just um, received the same email, <laughs> the same email, same email you guys all got. Yeah. So, so I just I just know it starts Friday. Yeah. And, and there's sure um, confirm the price. Wasn't it twenty thousand? Um, thirteen. So that if that, I, if you, that is for the all materials happening this upcoming weekend. I know we did yes. all receive that email of of request. Um, and so again, you know, we were trying to support as best as we can. I know I did have questions because I'm uh, for some reason it seems that <laughs> it, there's always uh, it's always last minute. Uh, I'm not sure who the planning committee is, but I think all materials happens every year, uh, and it does go around to different communities. Um, and so it's always a uh, a little frustrating when we're getting last minute requests because I know there's planning that happens uh, every year. Uh, but look, that being said, uh, it's still happening. It's happening work here in Six Nations. Starts, I believe, Friday. Um, and so they are looking for a financial um, request of $13,000. Looking to further questions, comments. Again, our goal here at this table has always been of uh, fair and equity being equal across the board. Uh, given the fact that we were just able to support, I think, a lacrosse team, we now have to support baseball. <laughs> so that's uh, the beauty of being fair and equal across the board. So that being said, I'll look to uh, Nathan, moved by Nathan to uh, support the all Ontario Fast uh, Baseball coming into Six Nations of $13,000. Source of funds identified as OFNLP. It's moved by Nathan, seconded by Audrey. Are there any further questions or comments? Sherry Lynn? Um, can we add in there? And if um, Cheryl has the manpower <laughs> to help with the diamonds again at 100%. some point, or just, do you know what I mean? Because I that's think, a, uh, a lot of yeah. games. <laughs> yeah. So Cheryl, Cheryl's still online as well. Cheryl, can we make sure that everything is prim and proper and grass is cut and everything's ready to roll over there? Everything is done, Chief. We're ready. We're ready for it. Well, we're going to contribute to the uh, grounds crew. My staff will be operating a tractor. We'll be um, grooming the diamonds every other game, but marking and, and uh, you know, raking, doing a soft rake at the batter's boxes and the uh, pitching mounds every game. Perfect. So, but yes, we'll have staff there to help. We really appreciate that. Please extend that to all of the staff as well. Yeah, what for yeah. that, Cheryl? No. Yeah. Okay, Council, that being said, I'll look to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Nathan, seconded by Audrey. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. And again, a big uh, congratulations and welcome to everybody coming to All Ontario's here this weekend. I hope everybody enjoys uh, some, some good baseball. So thank you. At this point in time, I'll look to adjourn. Looking to a mover, moved by Nathan, seconded by Greg. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. That does, again, complete our agenda. And thank you, Nyama, for joining as well, as we got to give a shout out to uh, our Chiefs. Go Chiefs, go. Lacrosse, more sports. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. Nyama.